Hi everyone, it's uh, James Raven here uh, with another Winning Wednesday live Q&A. Um, so I'm originally, just a little introduction about myself, I'm originally from the UK as you can probably tell by the accent. I'm from a place called Portsmouth which is uh, right on the south coast of the UK, um, it's about an hour south of London. Uh, I've lived there my whole life um, and I'm currently racing for D-Force Racing in the F4 Championship. I uh, in the team are based in Houston. It's currently really we've got thunderstorms outside, so I'm kind of inside trying to get away from all the noise. Um, and yeah, so I this is my first year in F4 uh, and first year racing in the states. I've raced previously F1600 in the UK for four years uh, with an Irish team, Cliff Dempsey Racing. They were great. And I first got into racing when I was six years of age, um, when my dad built me my first go-kart. Um, and, uh, yeah, started from there, basically, and went up the categories, like, you know, most famous racing drivers do. They start from age six and then work their way up, and that's what I did until I was 16 and moved into F1600 when I was 17, 18. Uh, like I said, did that for four years. And now over in the US, and loving it over here, really, with the F4 Championship. Season so far, so started in Virginia, International Raceway, and then um, moved on to Road Atlanta, and then just at the weekend, we start uh, raced at Mid-Ohio. Um, VIR for me didn't go very well. We were, the team were fast, but I just couldn't keep the car on the track. I crashed in qualifying, uh, crashed in um, uh, the second race as well when I was in fifth on the first lap so that wasn't great so I had to, a lot of recovery work to do so we only gained we only secured 10 points that weekend however the road Atlanta was completely opposite really fast as well and then I managed to well the team managed a, a first and two second places so it was a really really good turnaround and then also I, the mid-Ohio weekend just gone uh, I had a two two fourth yeah two fourth places and then a second in the final race um under really hot conditions as well it's unbelievably hot in mid ohio um with it the same as atlanta but it was um it was really good first time at all these tracks i've never done any of these tracks ever before neither of the team apart from virginia and circuit of the americas where we go last in the championship uh so now i've done the introduction also a shout out to whoever's saying hello um now I've done an introduction about myself, I move on to um, some questions from social media that guys have sent in. And also, if you've got any questions during the session, just you know, pop them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. So, first of all, we've got, we've got from Emma on Facebook, what has been the highlight of your career so far and in what category of motorsport um, or would you like to see yourself in two years? Right, okay. So... I'd say the highlight of my career was probably in 2014. I've got a feeling who this is from as well, Emma, on Facebook. Um, in 2014, when I raced for Cliff Dempsey Racing in F1600 in the UK, so Formula Ford 1600, I, um, uh, we won the Formula Ford Festival, which um, is a really, like, well, it is a really prestigious race as well, worldwide, where basically it's been won by people such as uh, Johnny Herbert, Jensen Button, uh, Tommy Byrne, loads of F1 drivers basically, and that was that was probably my highlight in my career so far. To win that race was really really special, and following up to that, two years from now, I'd love to see myself um, in IndyCar or you know competing near IndyCar steps. But unfortunately, you know as everybody knows, it requires a massive amount of uh, backing in motorsport. So. Hopefully, that's where I'd see myself within IndyCar or close as close as I can be to IndyCar, or or even uh, GT sports cars. I think they're they're a good route to go. So yeah, either of them. Uh, another question from Peter on Facebook: What is the biggest difference you found between racing in England and the United States? That's a good question, actually. I'd say the biggest difference is um, weather. <laughs> that's a big difference. Uh, it's so much, so much more, uh, so much hotter over here. Sorry. And with that comes a lot of uh, different different challenges. You know, you lose a lot more uh, uh, fluids throughout the race. You know, you're sweating a lot more. 
um, and it's it is more intense, I'd say, physically. Um, however, I'd say the racing in the UK is more aggressive. Uh, people over there, we it's tend to kind of try and win it on lap one, um, whereas here it's probably. I mean, it's still aggressive here, but compared to England European racing, especially in F sixteen hundred, because there's a lot of people there that have done the championship for a long time. They know the tracks in and out, and also. Um, they know, you know, their way around and they're aggressive on track. So that, that helps um, make it a lot more aggressive and, and different to the US. Um, I've tra trained to the, for the heat by basically just doing runs out here, basically. Um, I've I've been running, you know, try and run every other day. I mean, not at the moment because we've got thunderstorms in Houston, so that's not great and get blown off my feet. But, so yeah, I've been running, trying to run as much as I can, Um and that really helps, I find. And also, just a lot of uh, weight training as well back in the UK when I was there because I normally fly to and from in and out of races. However, this time I'm staying a bit longer to cover two rounds. Um, so to cover mid-Ohio and then the next round in Pittsburgh. So I'll be staying here till September, uh, till August time, early August. So yeah, I'll, I'll do a lot of running in between races and try and get used to the heat more and more. Uh, next question from Daniel, or oh no, sorry. Next question from Clap Clap Clody on Twitter. What do you find odd here in the states compared to England? Uh, the the size of uh, like just general goods and services and stuff. So <laughs> like for instance, the fact that uh, everything here is just so much bigger. Um, I know it's an obvious thing to say because the country is miles bigger, but. But in terms of like, uh, so fast food stuff, you've got so much more choice here um, in terms of, you know, what you can get your hands on. Um, whereas in the UK, we're, we're quite restricted to stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'd say that's that's a big kind of odd thing to get used to. It's just the, the sheer kind of size of what what is available here. Uh, what is the hardest part about competing in the F4 Championship? That's from Daniel on Snapchat. That's a good question. I'd say the hardest part um, is just getting used to the tracks we haven't been to before. So the team has literally, like I said, it's only been to Circuit Americas and Virginia, and I haven't been to any. So it's that first initial kind of, right, we've got to get up to speed as quickly as we can, because if we don't, then we're going to be miles behind come qualifying. So that I'd say the hardest part is, yeah, not being able to kind of test and go to go to these tracks beforehand um, with testing restrictions so that is definitely uh, a, a big a big kind of uh, restriction in terms of how how hard it can be um, Peter Croft everything is bigger in Texas yeah that's true uh, people here drive much bigger cars you know spaces in Bay Park and spaces in uh, you know grocery stores that is a, is a lot lot wider and I see that for good reason uh, how did you like seeing the F3 America's car over the weekend? Um, yeah, I like the look of it. Obviously, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the Halo. I probably never will be. I'm pretty stubborn with stuff like that. So, But, um, no, I did actually really like the look of it externally. If you covered up the Halo, it looked great. Um, it did look really, really good. So, And I think it would be interesting to see how it goes. Um, it be interesting to see it at Pittsburgh when it's raced properly for the first time to see how well it does there and how fast it is. It does look an awesome, awesome bit of kit. So yeah, that'd be great. Um, what, what's your favorite workout for staying in shape? So I'd say my favorite workout is probably, um, bench press is pretty good. Yeah, I enjoy bench press. That's really good. And I love core workouts actually, core workouts. So stuff like, uh, weighted planks, I do them. I love doing them, they're great. Uh, stuff like uh, also um, Russian twists on the ground with weights, they're really good. So yeah, core cool workouts, they're, they're really good. So next question is also from Kay on Facebook. What is your future goal as a race car driver? Um, kind of alluded that recently in self in two years, but my future goal would be um, just, yeah, just to race at a high level such as IndyCar, um, or equivalent to that elsewhere, that would be fantastic. So something like that would be great. 
Uh, and then <laughs> show you a plank. Um, <laughs> I can do later on the session. I'll show you a plank later on the session. Thanks for that, Amy. Uh, right, I've got. <laughs> so I've got another question from Instagram from Jose Sierra, who is basically uh, also a racing driver within D Force. He races uh, F two thousand, US F two thousand, and uh, he's put, "What does no mames mean?" <laughs> so as D Force are a Mexican team, uh, obviously they speak Spanish. So uh, they have this saying that was introduced to myself and other uh, English speaking people within the team called "No mames," and basically. It can mean f they use it literally for anything. So, for instance, Mexico recently scored a goal in the World Cup. Like when they score a goal in the World Cup, everyone was saying, "Oh no, mames!" Um, it's kind of like it can be a celebratory thing or um, a surprise thing. Like, "Oh, I did this thing last night," and you're like, "Oh no, mames!" So yeah, it's really weird. Um, it's basically like a local colloquialism. Uh, so also the next question is from Toxic on Twitter. Since D-Force represents so many nationalities, have there been times where slang words have been misunderstood? Uh, I'd say probably more in terms of, like, humour. So, obviously, coming from Britain, and we've got a British engineer and an Irish engineer as well, our humour's fairly similar in terms of, like, its sarcasm and stuff, but theirs is... Um, I think it took them a while just to get used to that, but now everybody's on... On, uh, on board the same wavelength, basically. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say many get mixed up with slang words. It's more just, like, just the pure language barrier, but they all speak really, um, good enough English for us to understand. And I'm trying to learn Spanish. I'm trying my best. Uh, so hopefully I can understand more and more throughout the year, which would be good. Uh, and there's another three-part question from Jada Johnston uh, on Snapchat. What is your workout routine like? Are you on a restricted diet, and what driver do you want to grow up to be like? So, my routine is basically uh, back home in the UK. Normally, I start out uh, start out by um, basically going to the gym and start on stuff like stretches, basically just to loosen up, as that's really important. And then I'll move on to uh, basically stuff like bench press, uh, leg press squats just some basically big impact movement uh kind of uh weight training strength training i won't i won't do loads of reps because that um builds muscle and i want to stay try and stay as light as i can so by doing that it, i just do strength training to help with um uh, handling in the car and the physical uh kind of strengths the the car puts on you uh am i on a restricted diet uh yeah i mean I have quite a lot of cheat days, um, <laughs> probably more than I should, but I do quite a lot of cardio, so I, I try and weigh it out, and I've really got into big into running, so that has definitely helped, and see my fitness going up a lot with that. Um, so but I tend to just stay away from like big carbohydrates for me, like bread and pasta, a lot of that, because um, it has a big effect on me. But like I say, everything in moderation, like if you have you know, a bread every now and then, it's not going to harm you that much. Um, what driver do you want to grow up to be like? It's a good question as well. Um, I mean, I'd like to grow up to be something like uh, old school racing drivers like Jim Clark or people like that. Yeah, they'd they're be inspirations to be Jim Clark, Jackie Stewart, uh, James Hunt, uh, obviously, uh, Graham Hill. Those kind of older uh, racing drivers from the 60s and 70s, they'd be inspirations to me. Um, I mean, I know most, most racing drivers will say the Senna, Schumacher, stuff like that, or Mansell, but I'm a bit, I like to go a bit more old school. I've uh, got a, another question from Peter Croft. Aside from the tracks on the F4 schedule, what American tracks do you want to drive? Good question. Uh, I'd like to do um, Road America. Definitely love to do that track. That looks a great track. Um, and I'd like to do uh, poss uh, Laguna Seca, obviously. Laguna Seca looks an awesome track. Um, yeah, th those two probably the most, uh, and then possibly maybe a, a street track in terms of uh, maybe um, Toronto, something like that. That's a cool street track. It looks looks good. Um, and then 
yeah, so those three basically, especially Laguna Seca, that looks an awesome. Love to love to do the corkscrew. That looks a great, great um, section of the track. Uh, so Amy's asked, what music do you listen to on your runs? Well, normally just listen to like kind of um, house music because it's got a good beat to it, and I'm a massive fan of house music. So stuff, uh, so yeah, stuff like that basically with a good beat, or um, even a bit of uh, I'd say rock music as well quite into rock so yeah either some British bands out there like uh, some British bands like Sabin and stuff listen to them so they're good uh, but yeah no mostly just house or um, a, a random mix of uh, rock and rock and house basically so uh, we've got from Derek Ware 98 on snapchat another question how do the drivers feel about three short races a weekend would you prefer two longer ones that's a good question actually Again, um, I quite like the three short races. I mean, half an hour is still fairly... I mean, that's longer than most categories, junior categories, I think. Especially in the UK. I mean, in the UK, you only get like 15, 20-minute races. Um, like for F3 in the UK, it's only a 20-minute race. So t 10 extra minutes is good. And it really prepares you further up the ladder because obviously when you go higher up the ladder, the races get longer. Um I I'd pref I like the three short races to be honest. I I wouldn't. I think two longer ones. Yeah, you'd have to. There'd be different variables that would come into place, so like more tire management probably, um, or sorry, more tire tactics. Uh, but I I like it, and I think I haven't heard much around the paddock in terms of like drivers not wanting to do uh, three short races. So I think people are fairly happy with it. Uh, so another question from Carol on Snapchat: What is your favourite and least favourite track for racing in the rain? Good question, actually. So my least favourite is uh, Brands Hatch in the UK for the rain. It's that is like driving on ice. It's so so slippery, and partly because I've I've never I've only done a couple of sessions in the rain round there, but it's it's really really difficult to get right. Um, and then my favourite in the, in the rain is uh, a track called Anglesey in the UK. It's in Wales, so that's a beautiful track, really, really good. Um, and probably my favourite because when I last raced there in the rain in F1600, I, we won both races, so that was really, really good. Um, so yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed the, that track in the, in the wet. Uh, also, another question from... Uh, Greenway84 on Twitter I saw you, you went to a turtle race tell us more about that okay so recently last uh, month last time I was here in the US my teammate uh, well one of the other drivers in the team Corey Enders he um, he lives in Houston and he hadn't been out much so I was like well we should go out on a Thursday and see what see what the see what the um, city's got to offer so I found that there was this turtle racing and I couldn't believe it so we t went into downtown in Houston and we went to yeah turtle racing and it was obscene it was like the greatest like kind of thing most random thing I'd ever seen basically where they have all these turtles in a bucket in the middle of like a, a circle and then they lift up the circle and whichever turtle makes it off the map first wins and they had all different names for them and it was fantastic it was a really good evening it was so random so funny like just seeing 200 people around like a turtle racing scene cheering on and it was uh, no it was really really good uh, <laughs> F4US Championship do you practice Queen's English no but I do know the Queen no I'm joking um, no yeah everybody seems to hear um, seems to pick up the accent straight away obviously yeah it's a pretty distinctive accent the English one um, so yeah Another question from Sam Bedwell. How do you think the F4 series in the US compares to F4 series in other countries? Uh, that's a difficult question for me to answer because I haven't raced F4 in other countries. Um, this is the first time doing F4. So, but I think, you know, genuinely the organisation is really good. I mean, there's a couple of things I'd, I'd change or do differently, but that's just personal things. Um, but no, it seems really, really well run. We go to good tracks. Um maybe go to another track I'd add maybe go to you know one more track so have three more races um, uh, but no it seems it seems really well run I mean in Britain the F4 championship I mean it runs alongside the British touring car so that's a really good um, kind of advertisement for them 
is that they get to go with the British touring cars throughout the whole year, uh, which is really good. So that that is a massive bonus for them. But obviously that costs uh, way way more because of the TV rights and everything. But it's um, that's also a pretty good championship. But the F4 US is um, is really good. Will you be doing anything to celebrate Independence Day? Probably not because of the weather. I mean, hoping, hopefully maybe later on I'll get to do stuff. Um, but today at the moment it's just inside because literally the thunderstorm is so bad outside. It's uh, nearly flooding some of the trailers. So, so yeah, probably just inside at the moment. But I'd like to check out what's going on later. Uh, so we've got another question from the Drizzle 522 on Twitter. Who is your racing hero and why? I'd say my racing hero is Jim Clark. Um, because and why simply because he was an amazing driver like his statistics alone are just incredible he you know he just basically won three world titles in the I believe yeah 60s and uh, 70s and he was he was just an incredible driver um, you know people's stories about him he was a true gentleman um, on and off the track and he was just unbelievably talented so yeah, and the videos I've seen from him were just unbelievable. So, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to see... Um, well, I'd definitely see him as a racing hero. So, um, before uh, going any further, I'd just like to say this will be the last call on live question. So if you've got any more, just send, keep them coming in. I'll try and answer as many as I can, and I'll give you shout-outs as well. So please just leave anything in the comments below. Obviously within reason. Um, from Instagram, then, what is your favourite music to listen to before a race like i said just probably uh house music yeah that's good although recently i've recently um got into uh <laughs> john mayer john mayer my friend back in the uk he's a massive john mayer fan and he's got me into him so he's really good actually um i put people probably won't expect me to say that but yeah stuff like uh stuff like that and even like some country i've got into big on country music uh, maybe it's just being in texas has just got me into it but some stuff is actually really good so, yeah, either house or <laughs> some country stuff just for a laugh before the race, because it's important to relax. Like, if you go into a race, I find um, really tense and I, I don't perform as well. So I need to kind of relax before a race and just have a laugh, have a joke around. I'm not one of these drivers that can be, you know, having a skipping rope out and doing all of that. I just I can't do that. I think that's a bit, yeah, that's just not me, you know. Um, so I don't do any of that. I just relax before a race, have a you know, have a chill out session and yeah, just, you know, go through some pre-race notes and other than that, it's time to go racing really. So another question from Twitter, what is your favourite American dish and what is your favourite English dish? Oh, good question. So my favourite American dish, oh, that's difficult. I mean, I'll start with English because I, I probably know more English dishes, obviously. I so say my favourite English dish has got to be... Um, I'd say roast lamb. If you haven't tried roast lamb in the US, try it. Lamb is um, amazing. It's just the most incredible meat. So I'd say roast lamb with uh, like veg roast vegetables and roast potatoes and Yorkshire Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire puddings in the UK are just like gold. They are gold dust. So um, yeah, I love I love that. And then American dish, probably just like. A classic burger really you can't can't beat a classic burger you know medium rare inside the way it should be done uh so yeah stuff like stuff those two i'd say robbie greenway what's been your biggest obstacle you had to overcome in your racing career oh good question um i'd say like many drivers basically you know the, kind of the, the budget restraints um you know or sorry the budget requirements um you have to meet that's that's a massive obstacle for any young racer and uh, before you know biggest advice i'd give to somebody before they were to get into racing i'd say if you really want to do it you have to you have to be clear and not be misled about how much you know the sport costs because unfortunately because the sport costs so much it makes it so so difficult to rise to the top or to have the best people rise to the top as we see all the time um so yeah i'd i'd I think that is definitely the biggest obstacle uh, within racing. You know, it's it's a it's a massive shame, but unfortunately, it's it's always been like that, and I can't really see it changing in the future. Unfortunately, so yeah, 
we'll um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, Sydney on Facebook, another one. Uh, do you have any pre-race superstitions? No, I'm not really superstitious at all. I normally just like I don't have to get in like one side of the car or put one glove on first or you know anything like that or helmet um, certain what uh, you know balaclava before this or anything like that or earphones this I just put my stuff on and get in the car and that's it I'm not, I'm not superstitious at all like I don't go around avo avoiding like cracks in the pavement and you know stuff like that so it's it's not not like that at all um, Right, so last live question. If anybody's got any more, please send them in. I'll get answering. Uh, like I said, we also, so basically, I've also got a hat giveaway. The amazing, I'll put it on, amazing F4 US hat in, in honour of Independence Day, I believe, 4th of July. So, yeah, um, the winner of this uh, will be... Um, Peter Cro Croth, I hope I pronounced that right, or Croth, Croth, um, is the winner of this hat. Um, and for, on, if you want to claim the prize, obviously, um, have a look in the description. Uh, the F4 US Championship have left details on how to claim the prize. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think that about concludes um, what I've done here today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and hopefully throughout the season I'll get to do more like this and I'll be back and hopefully we'll be back on the top step of the podium at the next round so I'd like to say thanks for the F4 Championship uh, the sponsors Honda, HPD, Onroke, Pirelli, Ligier, um, SCCA Pro Racing and Speedcom uh, my team, DeForce uh, make sure you follow DeForce actually on Instagram DeForce Racing on Instagram Twitter and Facebook. We are really actually a fun team on uh, social media. We don't take it too seriously, which I think is important. Because I think if you do take social media too seriously, it can get a bit, get a bit rubbish. Um, so yeah, we we have a laugh, um, and we'll be bringing out a video soon about our round at Mid Ohio recently in the F four Championship. So that'll be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, enjoy enjoy um, the rest of your day, guys. Especially in America, because I know it's a big one for you guys. So. Um, and I'll catch you later. Thanks very much.